I think we should get the homicide out of the White House. This is not a political video. I don't like political comments. It's definitely not a conspiracy video. What it is, is a deconstruction and an appreciation of the greatest, gutsiest, funniest, and most misunderstood talk show appearance of all time. It's the story of comedy that is working on many different levels at once. It's the story of trolling taken to such an art that it becomes razor sharp social commentary. It's the story of a guy just goofing around. Stupidly a couple of times to be provocative. <laughs> I sometimes will just, uh, for the point of arguing with someone, I'll argue with them. And it's the epitome of the Gen X belief that anytime you can stick it to the man, you should. This is the story of that time Norm MacDonald went on The View and said this. Yeah. Oh, Clinton, he murdered a guy. Norm MacDonald's regular guest spots on talk shows like David Letterman and Conan O'Brien are stuff of legend. The moth joke, the chairman of the board, professor of logic, his emotional goodbye to Dave after a brilliant stand-up routine. I could go on and on and on. But his appearance on The View in 2000 was perhaps his most controversial, and I'm going to argue his most brilliant. First, the setup. Stay with us. We're about to take you on an exciting and bumpy ride. NBC News is now taking Florida out of Vice President Gore's column and putting it back in the too close to call. The 2000 presidential election was one of, if not the closest and most controversial elections in American history and Norm's appearance on The View happened directly in the aftermath. The 24-hour news cycle and daytime TV was having a filled day with it. It seemed like everyone on either side had to have an impassioned opinion on it, especially if you were famous. How did the Democrats do? It wasn't exactly the beginning of America's obsession with the minutia of politics, but it was certainly a big factor. There were a number of conspiracy theories surrounding the election, and everyone thought someone or another was trying to steal the election from them. In the end, the Democratic candidate Al Gore won the popular vote by a slim margin, and the Republican candidate George W. Bush won the electoral vote by a margin of just 537 votes. The election was ultimately decided by the Supreme Court, which ruled in favor of Bush 5-4, and just led to more conspiracy theories about the election being quote-unquote stolen. In truth, there may be a number of reasons why Gore lost the election. Could I just say that in my plan, <laughs> the lockbox would be used only for Social Security and Medicare. It would have two different locks. And one may be that he did not want former President Bill Clinton campaigning with him. Clinton had been and still remained a popular president among his base, but he was also mired in controversy at the time due to the Monica Lewinsky scandal. Gore may have believed that Clinton's presence on the campaign trail would hurt his chances of winning. There was also a darker conspiracy theory circulating, but I'm not going to get into specifics because I don't know anything about that kind of stuff, and nor do I want to. I know nothing about politics. I just mention it because Norm does and what is the most controversial part of his appearance. But as you will soon see, it's not the only controversial part. The 2000 election was mired in controversy and temperatures were hot on both sides. The media was really starting to kick into over-partisanship on both sides of the fence and the country needed the ice-cold inside of Canadian, old chunk of coal, and world's funniest man, Norm MacDonald, to point out just how insane we were all being. Supreme Court will begin hearing arguments over whether Paula Jones' ha sexual harassment suit against President Clinton may proceed. And he did it the only way Norm could, with hilarious insight. Jones, who claims that while governor of Arkansas, Clinton exposed himself to her in a hotel room, says that she can accurately and precisely describe the president's genitalia. And the ability to work on many different levels of comedy at once. But White House spokesman scoffed, quote, any woman who's worked in the state of Arkansas for the last 20 years could do that. Keep in mind as we get ready to deconstruct this appearance that we used to think that messing around with or even sticking it to a little bit authority figures was funny. Even if we liked them, even if we agreed with their politics, none of that matters. We thought it was funny just as a matter of course. And we were right. Also keep in mind that Norm had a lot to lose here as well. 
I've talked about how Norm MacDonald never sold out in a previous video. Please go take a look if you haven't. And this is the most admirable iteration of that that I can think of. It hadn't been all that long since he'd been fired from SNL. And while that stunk, it did give him a sense of coolness that had the media buzzing about him. His sitcom Norm was still pretty new and could use all the publicity it could get. Let's listen to Artie Lang talk about it just a little bit. Norm went on The View when we were doing the sitcom together. He had to fly to New York. We, we were shooting the show in L.A. at the Water Bros. thing, and I got there late, of course. And uh, I'm, I'm going, and all the writers are mad about something. And I didn't see The View. <laughs> they're, all, they're all just super mad. They went, ask your buddy Norm. <laughs> I go, what did he do? I can't wait. They're all mad in another room. I'm in the office, like, ah! <laughs> and they never begged him to do another thing he didn't want to do. It all started with Barbara Walters' rather snide introduction of Norm. So try these words out. Uh, droll, sarcastic, controversial, hilarious. She says hilarious like she was forced to. But as you will see in this clip, people may think twice before they use the words smooth or charming. <laughs> and in spite of that, please welcome Norm MacDonald. <laughs> Barbara's smiling here, but that's a pretty underhanded way to introduce someone's sitcom on national television, especially when they're there to try to promote it. This is a tired man. I mean, to go on The View, right? Mm. So I was like up all night, like for a long time, because uh, I was in my gambling days and stuff like that. Hi, uh, what's up, man? Okay, Norm, you're Canadian. Yes, I am. So what do you think of this whole presidential mess? I believe that this is the moment Norman Jean McDonald realized that the ladies of The View were setting him up for their own minor, buzzworthy, kind of gotcha moment, and he decided to turn the tables. The reason I believe this is because not long before this appearance, a few photos circulated of Norm McDonald, George W. Bush, and worst of all, Ben Stein. Because the recent election had everyone so heated, even this seemingly minor thing made new somehow. Let's listen to Norm talk about it. What happened was I got a call from this guy, uh, Ben Stein. You know that guy? Uh, sure, yeah. yeah. When ben Stein called me and said, hey, George Bush is coming to, you know, some celebrities are going to meet him. Would you like to meet him? Mm -hmm. And I go, yeah, that'd be cool, meeting a guy that might be to come to president. Right. So, you know, like when Clinton came, like there was like 10,000, like Streisand and Schwarzenegger, everybody, you know, showed right. up. And then when uh, Bush showed up, it was just me and Ben Stein. Literally, it was me and Ben Stein. We were the <laughs> The lady from The View goes, take a look at this picture. And there's show a picture of me standing beside uh, presidential nominee George Bush. Like, What's going on here? That's what the lady says to me, one of the ladies, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. The way they said it, it was like, it was like that picture of Kurt Waldheim with Hitler. And the, and the way we go. Uh, well, I, I hope that uh, uh, the Democrats don't steal the election from the, uh, the winner, you know, but... I've always felt like Norm's nervous energy kicked it up a notch here. I also find it interesting that he's chewing gum like one of his most notorious smart aleck characters. You like George yeah. Bush, don't you? I love George Bush, man. He's a good man, decent, you know, none of this. See, I, I, don't, I think we should get the homicide out of the White House. And this is where Star Jones realizes they asked the wrong question of the wrong fella. We don't want any more murderers. I no, think we, we should just go on to the next question. Oh. Barbara gives Norm a stern look, and Joy tries to pretend that this isn't hilarious. Murderers? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Clinton, he murdered a guy. Yeah, you know, we're not allowed, <laughs> no, to, you're not no, allowed um, to put out no, no um, accusations without that. That's a little Charlie. too far. That's the way it does let's, work. Just, let's just go on to the next question. <laughs> <part. laughs> yeah. This is not my week. What can I tell you? <laughs> Barbara thinks it's over. And I actually do think that Joy found it funny. Unlike today, back then the idea that a celebrity would go on TV and espouse belief in one of the more out there conspiracy theories was ridiculous. But Norm wasn't content with just being ridiculous. He had something much more layered and insightful in store. I'm being very nice, okay? <laughs> I'm being a good boy. This isn't the wisest thing to say to any comedian. Remember this? When you have this marvelous opportunity not to be the guy's butt boy, to go ahead and be his butt boy. Yes, no. embarrassing. You have a responsibility to the public discourse, and you, you fail miserably. I think. 
You need to go to one. I thought you were going to be funny. Come on, be funny. No, no, I'm not going to be your monkey. Now, Norm. Do you never hear that? No. Listen, Norm, we don't need I to don't talk get about into this. this. And I don't want to hear it. And this is not the place to make those accusations. And you're supposed to be funny. No, I'm not going to be your monkey. Here comes the funniest retort in daytime television history. Just as soon as Norm is done being chastised by Barbara. You have been properly chastised by Barbara, so I'm not going to ask the next question. I thought it was a matter of record. And another great normism is born. I'll tell you what's a matter of record. You will not be invited back if you don't shut up. Uh, he was on The View many more times. And here comes the second greatest line ever spoken on daytime television. All right, let's man, man talk, slaughter. Let's talk football. Oh, Norm, <laughs> Norm, <laughs> did you ever hear the word? Oh, oh I, the oh, phone is ringing. I certainly hope that somebody calling Please. to tell you to go home. Uh, and all of a sudden, like, my cell phone rings, right? <laughs> you got the bit, yeah. <laughs> the bit. Morty's yeah. on the phone. I, this guy would always have ideas. He would phone me with ideas. He'd go, I'll tell you what you do, man. He goes, you come out. He goes, you're talking to the, the, the gals, and all of a sudden, your cell phone rings, right? He goes, it's in the middle of the show. Like, he's really excited, right? He goes, you answer the cell phone. He goes, excuse me, ladies. He goes, we're not going to tell them. No. But you got a phone ringing. Oh. <laughs> um. Answer the phone. I don't know about it. Uh -huh. And yeah. uh, the cell phone rings. He goes, excuse me, ladies. It's your agent, Morty. You know, he had this name. Right, 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 yeah. He goes, so you're, like, <laughs> so you're like, Morty, you can't call me here. I'm on The View. I'm on TV. Right. What do you mean you have an offer for me? Uh, hello? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, no, uh, the thing is this. If uh -huh. I had this crazy Jewish accent in the story, you know, uh -huh. what do you mean? I, I can't do it. I'm on The View. There, uh, you know Matt Strauss? <laughs> yeah, the producer. <laughs> the producer. He told me it would be funny he said, like, why don't you carry a cell phone on and then let it ring and then have, pretend like there's a guy on it. Is there anybody on it? No, it's a pre thing, pretend You thing. know what, Norm? <laughs> You're a dead man. Probably not the best thing to say when someone's on your show talking about celebrity conspiracy theories. You can't work. Give this guy the point of soup and tell him to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Norm, please. All right, then. Norm. Despite yourself, I honestly believe that Barbara is starting to find this funny as well. Let's see how long that lasts. Norm, listen, not only have you annoyed us, <laughs> but that you, was I read that you have, you have actually annoyed one of your idols. Who is that? You've heard of comedy aging badly. This bit aged perfectly. Oh, the great Bill Cosby. Yeah, what'd you do? Oh, my God, I love that guy. He's my hero, you know, just like you. Maybe George, or, uh, Bill Clinton would be your hero. <laughs> it's most likely just a coincidence. But what comes next makes it seem like Norm might have heard something about Mr. Cosby and also thinks that Barbara might know something as well. And she was supposed to be the journalist. There has never been any accusations toward Bill Cosby. Norm is comparing Bill Clinton to then America's dad, Bill Cosby. He's still continuing to get under Barbara's skin, which I maintain is probably his number one goal. And I have no way of knowing if he knew anything about Bill Cosby, but those rumors had been out there for years. And perhaps as a celebrity journalist, Barbara Walters would have known that as well. You know how funny Bill Cosby yeah, is, Yeah, right? so I'll get to the point. <laughs> I'm going past menopause. Yeah. That was a pretty good line from Joy, and it really helped to break the tension. And now, Norm gets to the point. Not everything has a point. <laughs> By the way, here's a precursor to that Bill Cosby story. You no, know, I had the, maybe the greatest Bill Cosby story ever. Really? And now it's not in the top 10,000. <laughs> I uh, met Bill Cosby. We're all fans of Bill Cosby, right, Barbara? Uncanny. In I like Bill Cosby. Norm Let's talk about the great, Norm yeah. McDonald and I are on The Millionaire today. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, tell him about that, how, how you thought he's dumb today. Where do you see yeah. him today? <laughs> Did you say Greenbrier? Yeah. You would have won a million, but... Oh! Not People always told me Hollywood was, like, incredibly liberal of bias, and I thought it was untrue. Norm always claimed not to care about politics, and I believe him but he didn't seem to like hypocrisy. Even though things had settled down and everyone seemed to be having a pretty good time, Norm didn't forget the way they tried to set him up at the beginning of the show. There was no reason for anyone to ask Norm anything about politics other than to show off that picture and try to get a viral moment out of it. Well, they did. In the end, while it might be fun to analyze comedy, it's of no real value. Either it makes you laugh or it doesn't. 
and this appearance on The View has been making me laugh for 23 years. This episode of The View didn't sit well with everyone. Many accused him of being insensitive and disrespectful to the victims of violent crimes, but for fans of Norm's comedy, this was classic Norm. He was known for his ability to take on controversial subjects and push the boundaries of what's considered acceptable in comedy, and to do so in a keen, insightful way. Norm hated hypocrisy. I think the worst part of the Cosby thing was the hypocrisy. Even if it was only the second worst thing about most crimes. Plus, as I've pointed out before, he put his own sense of funny above everything else. These days, I think most people who appreciate comedy are in agreement. This 2000 appearance on The View by Norm MacDonald was typical Norm. Hilarious, biting, and somehow still underneath it all, just good-natured and mischievous. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. There's not a lot of comedians out there, though. And so when you lose one of them, and not to mention one of the greats and one of the last ones that would speak his mind, it feels like you're losing a book that nobody has copies of, kind of.